Hello everyone. Welcome to SJ's classes. I'm so happy that I have all of you here on my channel. I hope that the video lessons I post, even though they are not quite interesting or exciting to be watched, that they, they are quite informative. Please drop a thumbs up in the comment box if you think that they are informative. This video lesson will introduce you to a Mexican painter named Frida Kahlo and also would give you a detailed analysis of one of her self-portraits. Let's begin the lesson. The painting is titled Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird and it was made by the Mexican painter Frida Kahlo. Her full name is Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. She was born on 6 July 1907 and she died on July 13, 1954. Her artistic output comes to approximately around 200 paintings, sketches and drawings. Through her paintings, she explored questions of identity, post-colonialism, gender, class and race in Mexican society. Most of her paintings have strong autobiographical elements as well and therefore life experience is a common theme that you find in Callow's works. She experienced a near-death event in a bus accident that occurred on September 17, 1925. She suffered multiple fractures of her spine, collarbone and ribs, a shattered pelvis, broken foot and a dislocated shoulder. It is during the recovery period following this accident that she started focusing on painting. The devastation to her body was represented in the broken column that was made in 1944. It is an oil on masonite painting. Masonite is a type of fiber board. So it's an oil on masonite painting and in it Kahlo is depicted nearly naked split down the middle with her spine presented as a broken decorative column. Her skin is dotted with nails and she is also fitted with a surgical brace. Her pain over her divorce from Rivera can be seen in pieces such as the two Fridas and of course the painting that we will discuss today self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird. While pieces such as the broken column and without hope suggest Callow's anguish towards her ongoing physical deterioration. Even her infertility is explored in works such as Roots. With Henry Ford Hospital, which is the title of another painting that she made, it gave a direct reference to the miscarriage she had at the said hospital, which is Henry Ford Hospital. So that's why I said that most of her uh, paintings have strong autobiographical elements. Callow's first self-portrait was self-portrait in a velvet dress which was made in 1926. It was painted in the style of 19th century Mexican portrait painters who themselves were greatly influenced by the Re European Renaissance masters. And you see their influence in things like elongated hands and neck, the stylized waves in the background, etc. In her second self-portrait, which was titled Time Flies, that came out in 1929, Kahlo used folk style and vibrant colors. Some of her other notable paintings are Frida and Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera is her husband. The Suicide of Dorothy Hale. That was made in 1939. So these are some of her notable works. After Callow's death, Diego Rivera, her husband, whom she married, divorced and again remarried, had La Casa Azul. La Casa Azul means the blue house and this was her childhood home, uh, Callow's childhood home in Mexico. So he redesigned it as a museum dedicated to her life. The Frida Kahlo Museum was opened to public in 1958, a year after Diego Rivera's death. The diary of Frida Kahlo covering the years 1944 to 54. The letters of Frida Kahlo were both published in 1995. So these are the documents from which we gather details about her life. 
Although Callow had achieved success as an artist in her lifetime, her posthumous reputation steadily grew from the 1970s and reached what some critics called Frida mania by the 21st century. She was even adopted by the feminists because some of, some of her paintings represented feministic ideals. And today she is perhaps one of the best known artists of the 21st, 20th as well as 21st centuries. Now let's move to a discussion of the painting. The painting is titled Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird. As the very title suggests, this painting is a self-portrait of Callow. Out of the 143 paintings she created, 55 were self-portraits and harsh life experiences were a common theme that you find in them. In most of her self-portraits, Frida depicted her physical and emotional pain associated with the accident, which I spoke about earlier, and the troubled relationship with her husband, Diego Rivera. Of all the self-portraits, this is her most popular and most celebrated one. This oil on canvas painting is a rather small painting. It comes to around 25 by 18 inches or in centimeters 60 by 46 centimeters. It was painted in 1940. In the painting, Callow, dressed in a white robe, faces the spectators. It's, she faces us in the painting. She has a calm and solemn expression. Now, this could also be suggestive of the fact that you know, she was patiently enduring all the pain that she had to experience in her life. The physical as well as mental sufferings, pains. The physical pain that came as part of the accident and the mental sufferings she had to experience because of her troubled relationship with her husband. It is probably her bold eyebrows, the thorn necklace and the hummingbird tied to the necklace that attracts our attention the moment we look into the picture. The thorn necklace strangles her throat and it trails down her chest like the roots of a tree and it draws blood from her neck. I hope you can uh, see all these things in the painting that is there on the screen. This element you know, this element, uh, the, the, the thorn necklace and how, you know, blood oozes from the wounds that are being, that are made by the thorn necklace. It reminds us of the woven crown of thorns which was placed on the head of Jesus during the events leading up to his crucifixion. So we have a Christian imagery over here. A Christian imagery that probably she consciously or unconsciously placed in the canvas. Now, art historians say that perhaps Callow was comparing herself directly to Jesus Christ through this. It could also be said that this necklace is symbolic of her marriage and separation from Diego Rivera, which happened in 1929. The necklace piercing Callow's neck would be symbolic of the pain she was experiencing over this separation. The hummingbird that you find along with the necklace can also be treated as a symbol. A bird, as you know, often symbolizes freedom and life, especially a hummingbird which is colorful and colorful and always hovering over flowers. But in this painting, you see that the hummingbird is black and lifeless. This might be a symbol of Frida herself. The Frida who was tied down from a beautiful and color, colorful life by the mishaps in her life. I read that in the Mexican culture, the hummingbird is a symbol of good luck and therefore the hummingbird can also be interpreted as a symbol of hope. The hope that she had in her life or the hope that she found through the paintings that she made. We also find that Frida is surrounded by insects and animals and in the background we see a lush, dense jungle. A monkey sits behind her right shoulder, its eyes directed on its hands. And it is this monkey who carelessly tucks at the thorn necklace and causes the host to bleed. It is believed that this monkey symbolizes Rivera, her husband, because it is a monkey that tucks the thorn necklace tied to make its wearer bleed. And also because it is said that Rivera gave Callo a monkey as a gift. So art historians say that the monkey on her right shoulder is probably a symbol of Diego Di, uh, Rivera. Above her head, 
two dragonflies that almost look like flowers transformed into butterflies hover in mid-air above the two butterfly clips on Kalos' headdress. The butterflies are believed to symbolize resurrection and therefore we again have aspects that could connect the Christian imagery of Jesus Christ with Kalo. So probably Kalo was portraying herself as a Christian martyr. Towards the right we see a black cat with strikingly blue eyes that peers over her artist's shoulder and seem to be looking menacingly at the space between Kalo and the spectator. It seems to be ready to pounce on the hummingbird. The black cat could be treated as a symbol of bad luck and death which loomed throughout her life and the cat ready to pounce at the hummingbird could be indicative of how life was preparing or attempting to ruin her hope or the luck that she had in her life. Now a few sentences on the feministic aspects of this painting. Feminists see this portrait as her statement on feminism as the period during which she painted this was the period you know, during which we see the beginnings of first wave of feminism when women you know, who were the minority then were you know, fighting for a change. It is not just this painting that feminists quote as projections of her feminist ideas but also other paintings that touched on female issues such as abortion, miscarriage, birth, breastfeeding and much more. Feminists say that Frida in this painting kept her moustache. I hope you can see that in the painting. So she kept her moustache and unplugged eyebrows so as to subvert the society's conservative attitude towards feminine beauty. So the society has a particular probably a strict or conservative sense regarding feminine beauty and she, wa she wanted to subvert this particular notion. And feminists say that it's for this reason that she kept her moustache as well as, you know, a thick eyebrows in the painting. So that's all regarding uh, Callow and her painting, self-portrait with thorn necklace and the hummingbird. I hope you have a clear-cut understanding uh, regarding the painting as well as the painter. Thank you so much for being with me. I will see you in another video lesson. Thank you.